Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we went through some of the fundamentals of planar tracking, as well as covered the first planar tracking workflow using an axis node. In this video, we look at the second planar tracking workflow using a GMOSC as the recipient of the planar tracking data. Now the workflow between this and the previous workflow is that tracking an axis node places the transformation data into the axis. Tracking a GMOSC node applies the tracking data to the actual GMOSC shape. Therefore, the shape of the GMOSC is animated over time based on the planar track. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. Alternatively, if you're watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your internet browser. So in this shot, we have a close-up of an actor who starts looking down, and then he looks up. As far as client requests go, we have been asked to darken, blur, and possibly change the colour of the sunglasses. Now the technique I'm about to show you can be used to help speed up and automate rotoscoping. It can also be used for daily tasks like blurring logos, faces, etc. Depending on what you want to track and the movement within the image will determine what technique you use. So scrubbing the picture, we have a more or less flat surface with a tilting movement. There is also a lighting shift in the lens because of the reflection. All of these will need to be considered when setting up the planar tracker. Now I just want to point out that the source clip is connected as my background, as well as Media Input 1 in the media list. You could build this up in stages by adding an image, attaching the GMOS to it, and proceeding from there. However, I am going to select my first media input and add a 3D shape. As a reminder, this allows me to create 3D geometry based on a GMOS, and it can be textured with the image. Now we could draw the GMOS in the result view but I'd like you to get into the habit of using the Object Viewer for this task. Ensure the GMOS node is selected in the Action Schematic, or the Object View will not show anything. Hover over the Result Viewer and press F8 for the Object Viewer mode. Now click and draw the GMOS around the right lens of the sunglasses. To ensure we get enough detail, draw the GMOS beyond the edges of the lens. This can be adjusted after the planar track. Now double click on the GMOSC for its controls. At this point, I want to remind you that it is more important than ever that you select the current node that you wish to apply the track. For instance, if you double click on the axis of the GMOSC, you will get the tracking menus applicable to the axis node and not the GMOSC. So double click on the GMOSC node and in its controls, you will find the appropriate tracking menu. Now we covered the fundamental options of planar tracking in the previous video. So let's examine the shot and set the relevant settings. Scrubbing the shot, you have obvious position, scale and rotation. The region that we will track has no perspective, so this option needs to be off. We will use the region warping algorithm and the default pixel sampling settings. Since we are tracking the lens, you need to take into account the reflection. The tracker does not recognise this as a reflection, but more as a lighting change. So enable Lighting. The final consideration is that the shape of the lens changes over time because he tilts his head in the shot. So enable Auto Reference Update. Go ahead and analyse forward from the first frame. During the analysis, you will see that the shape reference updates with the changes, but this should be a solid track. As a good reminder, if you click the axis node and scrub the time bar, you will see no animation in the sliders. Now select the GMOS node and select the Vertices menu. You will see that the values are changing the GMOS shape over time. This tracking data has been placed in the Track Shape Animation channel of the GMOS. But there is also the Shape Animation channel that allows for offset editing of all the vertices. Ensure Auto Key is on, because the GMOSC was keyframed in the Shape channel on the frame it was created. Now go ahead and reshape the GMOSC to the lens. The idea behind this workflow 
is that the majority of the animation is automatically tracked into the GMOSC. You can now go over a series of frames and refine the GMOSC as the lens changes shape over time. So I have keyframed the GMOSC at various frames to adjust the shape. All the other frames will interpolate the GMOSC to create smooth transitions between the frames. Scrubbing the time bar, you can see very quickly how we've created a GMOSC animation. The top part of the shape even goes off screen, but everything is still locked down. Now, with this lens masked and tracked, hover over the object view and press F4 for the result viewer. Scrubbing the time bar, this is the 3D shape we have created from the GMOSC. Let's blend it in with the lens. Double click on the GMOSC node. Press A to switch to add points. Hold SHIFT and add a softness gradient to the GMOSC. To enable the softness for the 3D shape, double click on the 3D shape node. Change the GMOSC transparency from DO NOT RENDER to FOR 3D SHAPE ONLY. So that's the geometry taken care of. Click the MEDIA PROJECTION button to project the media back onto the 3D shape. Now let's say that your producer wants the lens to be darker. Double click on the projection node and drag the diffuse effect downwards. OK, that's fine. Next, your producer wants you to blur the contents of the lens. Drag the X and Y softness sliders to add blur onto the projection. If you repurposed these techniques, you could use these methods to blur and mask objects from your viewer if that's your requirement. Finally, your producer, that fussy person, decides that the sunglass lenses need to be a different colour. So click the media menu. Select the first entry in the media list that is feeding the 3D shape and its projection. Go into the colour corrector and press 3 for the action contextual view. Now let's give the lens a dark bluish tint. Once you are happy, you can exit the colour corrector and scrub the time bar. So in this example, we used planar tracking to derive the basic GMOSC animation opposed to the traditional vertex tracking which is still available. Now in both examples of planar tracking, either with the axis node or the GMOSC shape, we have not dealt with perspective changes. They are both very capable of taking perspective into account during a planar track. However, these objects do not alter the camera or 3D environment in order to make action completely aware of the true perspective in the source media. In the next video, we go through the workflow of using the perspective grid for planar tracking that can determine true perspective analysis and apply it to the Action 3D composite. This is something you don't want to miss. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.